another cold and wet North Carolina weekend, which interferes with what we were planning to do for our project. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel, really cold edition. If you've been here before, we want to thank you for coming back. If today is your first visit, we want to extend you a very warm welcome. If today is your birthday, eeha! Happy birthday to you! In today's episode, we're going to show you how to make charcoal using one of these and one of these. No, I'm joking, that's not what we're going to do. In today's episode, we're going to use scrap, like this board. Everything we used today was scrap material, right? Yep. And we are going to use the flame, but not to make charcoal, mm -hmm. to make this beautiful and functional and elegant and trendy, what else can we say? Uh, spa-like. Bathtub, spa-like, mm -hmm. bathtub... Uh, tray. 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 Tray uh, These are very trendy. They sell for a lot of money in uh, on Etsy, right? And on uh, artistic sites like that, even on Amazon. And in our case, again, we use uh, scrap wood, but you need less than one uh, eight-foot board of this, right? Mm -hmm. So you can make it for under 15 bucks, even with the crazy prices of today's wood. So if you stick around, we're going to show you what we did, the things we did wrong, the things we did right. We're going to give you some tips and tricks like we always do. And we're going to try to make it fun. So we're going to try and work on a project today. Uh, we had to switch gears again because as I saw you, it's a wet and uh, very cold day today in North Carolina. So we're going to work first in trying to make a little jig and we're going to make a hole. I mean, I know it's a very exciting jig, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we've selected the hole saw that we think is going to fit the, the size hole that we need. Right. And we had to find the attachments, the little pieces, parts, which we, you know, if you don't put things back when you're done with them, you have a hard time finding them the next time you want them. But mm -hmm. here we are, we have it. And it's forward, right? No. Mistake. The more you press, the more it's going to bind, you know? Okay. So now we're going to test our process. We made the little jig with a, an opening the way we want it. And now we're going to see if our plant router and the bit we've chosen will allow us to make the opening that we desire, right? Right. So we you are using two scrap pieces and you saw us put the hole with the hole saw here. Now we've laid it on top of another scrap piece and secured it so that we can see and, uh, and practice with this piece before we put it on our finished um, piece of wood. Okay. Okay, now we're going to just separate those two and see what we did. What is it okay, what are your thoughts? I think mean, it looks pretty good decent. Yeah. How deep did we go? About half? I don't know. Yeah, it's about. it's about. You want to go deeper? We can go no, deeper. Not, but no, I like that and I actually like that it's rounded too, not just square. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So probably on our piece itself we'll use some hot glue because we don't want those holes, right? right? 
I presume, but okay. okay. But the, this jig works, right? Mm -hmm. And again, all that does is allow us to make a hole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we are. This is our first, uh, the, our test cut. And it made a very nice, our jig works. I missed a couple of little smoothing sides here. So in the final, we'll make sure that we don't separate the, the jig from the piece until we're done, right? Mm -hmm. But this is how, what we were hoping we'll achieve. Yeah. It's very, it's very smooth and rounded edge mm -hmm. on the inside, which is what we expected our bit to do. And this is one of the first times we've used our plunge router. Yeah. And the first time we used that bit, we just took it out of its plastic. Brand new bit. Okay. Our normal technique of lining the boards up and making one cut instead of two. Mm -hmm. It all, always provides for more consistency uh, as well as you can get it done quicker. Yeah. So this is our, our final piece. We're going to actually join it with another piece to make it uh, wider. But because we don't want screw holes, if you remember on our test, we used two screws mm -hmm. to, to attach it. Mm -hmm. But we do not want screw holes because in that method, you're going to end up with two holes, right? Right. We don't want that in our final project. So what we did instead is use hot glue, which is hot. It's and hot. we're holding this and hopefully I won't use my hook strength and yeah. mess it up you know mm -hmm. so just like before we've clamped it so that this piece does not move around we need real stability when we're using the plunge router and we've used the same jig that we made before and we've hot glued it to the final piece right now we're ready to go <laughs> So here we are, and now we're going to try to break the, the glue. Okay, I'll let you do it. So we used our doweling jig and make the doweling holes on uh, on our two boards. Mm -hmm. And the next step will be to glue one of the surfaces and both holes, right? First, we're going to actually put glues on one side. I mean, uh, the dowels in one side and glue them. Then we're going to put glue in between the dowels, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put glue in the holes of the other side. Okay, so glue and dowel, make sure the dowel is fully seated. Once that's done for all three of the dowel holes that we've made, then we're gonna put glue on one edge of the board and then we're gonna tap them both together. Align the dowels and tap them together. And when you, need, when you do that, make sure that there, are not, there is no debris in here because that will prevent the dowels from sitting correctly. Right, okay. And, and then some... they have to clamp and stay together for what, 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. To let the glue dry, okay. I need to order more glue. in it. It might. Here it comes. 
times just enough. It is a little cold. Our glue is not cold, but the, the atmosphere, even though we have a, the heater on here, is a little cold, right? Mm -hmm. Once you go completely on, it doesn't go any more in. Okay. I think we have a little bit of a plug there. I'm sure we do. Now we put glue on the inside of one board and in the holes on the opposite side. Okay, so we need the clamps. Mm -hmm. and now we piece it together and we're going to clamp it so that it gets a good closure of this seam. It looks like I need the clamp in the middle too, or not? Mm -hmm. Is that just the... Uh, that might be just the... Uh, That's the little lip, I think. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Now we're waiting for glue, glue, to dry. glue to dry. So we went to our scrap again and we found a piece of wood that would be ideal for our, uh, I don't know what to call it, for our stops, I guess mm -hmm. that's what it is. And the stops are in the underside of the, of the tray and their job is to make sure that the tray does not fall in the tub, right? They create a nice um, stop. I guess that's what we call yeah. them stops. <laughs> So if you bump the thing and goes to the right or left, it will not go enough to let everything that you have on the tray fall into your bathtub, right? So again, it doesn't have to be the whole width of your prototype, as long as it is long enough to, to do the job, that's all you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So since we like this piece, we're going to cut that exactly in half, and then we are going to see if we like it or not, I guess, right? So we cut our piece, and again, you don't have to be absolute accurate here, and our pieces are a little bit different in length, right? And this is not a big deal unless that width of the piece was critical. And in our case, it is not critical, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to cut that uh, 16th, or you think it's more than yeah, 16? No, it's like a 116 bow. We're going to cut it off to make them the same dimension, mm -hmm. but technically, for what we're using, probably you wouldn't even know they're different no. in the distance, and they're not visible, but because we're a little bit OCD, we're going to make sure they're the same dimension. Right. So we cut our two pieces the same dimension, and there are two ways of doing that. Again, if you imagine that this is the underside, in our case, this is the top side, right? Mm -hmm. But if it is the underside, there are two ways to do it. One of them is to put the, the tub lip between the two of them, right? right. So you, you... So the side of the tub that's free right. would fit right in that channel. The other option is to put one on in one side the other on the other side, and then it sits in between. So they're right. both inside the tub, right? Right. And, and this, I think, is a matter of uh, preference and, and taste. I don't think there is a right or wrong one. And it, it might work better for some tubs versus the others, right? right? Like if you have a tub, for example, in a closure that is very, very close to the edge, you might not be able to put one on each side, and you might have to do the one that the side of the tub, the free tub, goes into the channel. I stylistically like them one on each end. What are you liking, ladies? I think we'll probably go with one on each end and that allows for a little more flexibility with your particular tub. Mm -hmm. But definitely you can do it any way works for you, right? right. We, ex we present to you the two different styles and it is up to you from that point forward. Yes. Okay. So as always, uh, we, we do tell you guys when we mess up and and I did mess up in this project. We salvaged it with some creative uh, redesign, right? But what we did, we forget to put a stop on our router. And as a result, we went very deep. Luckily, I noticed it before we went through the piece. So we salvaged the piece, right? Mm -hmm. So we can, the way we have it now, we can definitely put a, an iPad and, and watch something on our iPad, right? Mm -hmm. 
and that, that looks decent. But also, because it got deeper, we created this kind of, um, what we call that, accessory? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's like a backrest. And that gives you an extra space that you can put a book <coughs> or something taller, right? That mm -hmm. you can read. Now, you can still incorporate that. I kind of like this idea, even though it was not in the original plan. But definitely the other thing we should have done is use the one size smaller bit, right? Okay. This is just too, skinnier channel. No, that's too wide, right? right? Okay. So those are the two mistakes, but again, <coughs> We have never done this before. Uh, Elpida is going to use it and, and we salvage it for that use, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to make it for a customer, always make a prototype with cheap wood first. Mm -hmm. And this couldn't be cheaper because it's free, it's uh, scrap for us, right? Yep. So this is a prototype that's still good enough for us to use, right? Yep. Right, let's move on. And so now we're moving into the finishing part of the project and here you can, Sanding is definitely something you want to do on uh, furniture style projects, right? Mm -hmm. We have a thickness planer, so we passed it first through a thickness planer, but most people don't have thickness planers. Sanding will do the same thing, it just takes longer, right? right. And we're going to still sanding a little bit because the thickness planer leaves a nice smooth area, but we wanted what we're using, 120? A little finer, yeah, this is 180. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. We chose to Suzuki bang the piece, which again is the Japanese uh, burning method. And as you can see, the sap there burns nicely. Right? You can neutralize the sap if you want it to fit, you know, fit so it will not burn. But it's okay if you let it burn, right? I happen, I happen to like what it does. That's just a personal preference. It makes a nice video too, right? Yeah. So we're going to Suzuki Bang. This is our book support piece, right? Yeah. And uh, the book support accessory, actually, right? Yeah. And we're going to Suzuki Bang everything on this piece. And we're going to be back with you. So here we start. Uh, Suzuki banging the main piece and it always amazes us how immediately the piece changes how it looks, right? So that takes a long time, not a long time, but it takes a little bit of time. We're not going to subject you to that. For some people. For non pyromaniacs unlike you. It's just the transformation that's nice. Right. So we're finally done. The challenge of the day was weather, right? Yep. It completely made us change the project we had planned. And we we're happy with this project. This is going to, to live with Elpida, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we learn a lot. This is the first time we use certain techniques like we've never used before our plans router to make we learn a lot and we make some mistakes and that's fine part of what we wanted to convey it is okay to make mistakes right mm -hmm. now when if you want to do something like that to, to sell this in our case would be a prototype we wouldn't sell this right right so here it is with uh our company we didn't have two t lights the same but you get the idea right mm -hmm. And a nice cup of water or wine or, you know. Whatever your beverage of choice is. Correct. 
-hmm. And again, we, we use that as an accessory if we replace the iPad or the whatever tablet, uh, you, tablet have. you have. You can use it for a book or a map or, you know, mm -hmm. a Kindle. Right. Probably you can put a Kindle directly though, right? Probably. Most Kindles will be on this size. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what do you say overall, ladies? Yeah, I think it's nice. Yep. And again, the Suzuki Pan method does two things. Not only looks really nice, but in our case, because this would be over water when you take a nice leisurely bath, mm -hmm. it provides some water resistance. We have a chair that has been out in the weather two years now. At least a year. And it is looking fine. I mean, we need to wash it a little bit. Yeah. But it, it has not uh, uh, start uh, rotting or anything. And right. we also have a bench by our fireplace that we protect it this way and it is in great shape. Mm -hmm. So we stand behind this method. We have used it and we like it. Yes. All right. But for our personal use, it works fine. Mm -hmm. This is removable and you can put a, a tablet here if you want. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use a book, this will provide you a more substantial backing, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't put a book on a slot. Uh, we hope that this taught you some things and we hope we were entertaining. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and buy us a coffee. The link is below. If you didn't, don't buy us a coffee and give us two thumbs down, right? Right. Hit it twice. Share, like, subscribe, wash your hands, put your masks on, keep your separation and get vaccinated. So finally we'll get out of this mess we've been the last two and three years. And we're going to see you again with a brand new episode soon. There you go. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homesteading Channel. Friends, take care of yourselves.